Jeff AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the third Tuesday of the month, which means it's time for Vinegar and Spice and Everything Nice with Thomas Allen of California Balsamic and Nick DeVorn of Local Spicery, where they feature their incredible SOS-free products in whole food plant-based dishes and show you how to make them and also give you the recipe. Today, we're going to start first with Nick. Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. How have you been, AJ? I'm good. I'm so excited. We were talking before we logged on that for the first time, Ann Esselstyn has six, maybe more than six of your spices, and I'm so excited <laughs> for her to try them. Well, I'd love to get some feedback and see what she thinks. We've been following the Esselstyns for uh, for some time, so uh, we uh, we think a great deal of them. Well, I am so excited that she has your product. So you're going first today. What are you making? Uh, so we're going to be uh, talking about two blends. Uh, one is our Jin Yang and one is our Depth. And both of them I'm using to uh, to make a, uh, a vegan Kung Pao, uh, uh, which includes making a uh, an SOS-free hoisin sauce. Ooh, that um, sounds amazing. I wish that these existed, you know? Well, it's it, it's not a perfect recipe because I don't know if you caught I didn't say SOS-free uh, uh, Kung Pao. Uh, I am using a low-sodium uh, uh, soy sauce, and I just, just can't find anything that, uh, that replaces that that satisfies me. Um, but uh, you know, people that, that have their own workarounds for soy sauce, you can see in the recipe where it is and, and what they do with it. But so I was shocked, actually shocked. I, you know, been cooking uh, uh, using hoisin sauce most of my life. And I think for the first time, I, I actually read the label and I couldn't believe how much salt is in it because it's, it's not a salty flavor. It's a, you know, it's really kind of a sweet, tangy flavor. Um, uh, so, uh, it was, you know, you might wonder, I mean, with all of the different ingredients you use to cook, uh, cook Chinese, why did I jump in and say, I'm going to make my own hoisin sauce? And mostly it was, I just couldn't believe that it had, uh, you know, here's, here's a jar of commercial hoisin sauce. And, uh, uh, one tablespoon has 22% of your, uh, of your RDV of sodium. And on top of that, the number one ingredient in it is, uh, is brown sugar. And this is, you know, as, as you know, hoisin is a sauce that's made with, with plums, which are naturally sweet. So, uh, you know, I took kind of a deep dive into what it is, how to make a hoisin sauce and why that is. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure it. But um, uh, we are going to be talking about a, uh, uh, you know, how to make uh, your own hoisin sauce just really, really quick and, and how to use that to make, uh, make your uh, uh, Kung Pao. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, actually, let's, let's jump in. It's going to be a little bit different today. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be cooking the dish. Uh, the dish is, has been cooked. It's over here. We'll plate it. We'll show it to you. I'm going to show you all the ingredients and talk through how it gets put together. Uh, but we've already shot uh, the uh, the actual cooking. And while I'm talking right now, Evelyn is, is still working uh, editing. Our plan is you know, rather than, you know, make you wait through, uh, you know, 30 minutes of uh, of me, we're going to take these things and try to tune them down to five to 10 minute reels. Uh, so you get just the good stuff. Uh, we get the, the recipe across and uh, hopefully it's a better way uh, to communicate. And it it, uh, it gives me a little bit more uh, freedom uh, when we're talking to be able to, to kind of address what we need to address. Uh, so I want to I want to start by saying giving you everybody a URL and that is www.localspicery.com slash chef AJ. If you use that link, you will automatically be uh, uh, set up to receive two free, uh, you know, small one tablespoon approximately samples of SOS free spices. You can you can uh, tell us which ones you want and they'll be put in with your order if you enter using that uh, that link. Uh, then the other thing, once you get into that link, if you click the logo, the local spicery logo on the top left, that'll fly you over to our home page and then scroll down and uh, you'll find as you go down, you'll see a, a picture that looks just like this scene behind me. And that's our blog. And if you click that blog, 
That's where you'll be able to find my recipes. That's where you'll be able to find uh, links to these uh, reels that we're going to be uh, uh, putting out. And for those of you that, uh, that uh, you know, follow our newsletter, uh, you can get the you'll, you'll also get that information in the newsletter. Um, so localspicery.com slash chef AJ. Uh, uh, why am I doing, why am I doing a Kung Pao? Uh, we got really into Chinese food because this, uh, March is, is, uh, Bok Kai time in Marysville. Bok Kai in Chinese, uh, in Chinese religion is the river god. And we have a, a temple to the Bok Kai, the, the one eyed river serpent, uh, here in Marysville. And uh, it's kind of a big deal in this town. If you ever, if you want to plan a trip to come to Marysville, to come visit us and to really see Marysville in its best glory, plan it in March and come over Bok Kai weekend. It's a great time. We have a, you know, a, uh, uh, an extensive uh, parade with a parade dragon. Uh, you know, we do the, uh, the, the lion blessings for the businesses. Uh, all of the museums are open. Uh, usually here at the spicery, we uh, we're serving, uh, uh, we're serving snacks, and, and this year what we were serving was this Kung Pao. Um, this is a recipe that Evelyn uh, put together after reviewing multiple, uh, you know, other recipes online, and uh, it's it's it is it, it, it hits my two uh, criteria. It's really really easy to make, and it's delicious. Um, and it features uh, our Jin Yang, and you know, I, Jin Yang is one of our uh, uh, SOS free blends. Uh, it is Cantonese in nature, and it's just kind of a, a collection of, uh, of general Cantonese flavors. It includes, uh, uh, well, it's got black pepper. It's got uh, uh, um, Szechuan peppercorn. It's got a little bit of, uh, of uh, star anise, um, uh, you know, chilies, cardamom, uh, uh, cassia cinnamon, coriander, uh, Basically, it's it's the flavors that you get in a Chinese five spice, but it's not blended to be sweet. It's blended to be savory. And uh, you'll find that a lot of recipes that are written, um, that you'll find out there for Chinese food, uh, they overuse uh, Chinese five spice because they know that everybody has it. But it really is too sweet for most applications. And I find the Jin Yang is a, is a much, much better blend if you're trying to get a, you know, a Cantonese or Chinese flavor. Uh, it doesn't have that really, really sweet, spiky flavor of the uh, uh, the star anise and too much cinnamon. Much, much more balanced. Uh, it carries a little bit of heat, but it's just the heat of black pepper. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hot for too ma for many of you. And uh, and a little bit goes a long way. You can use just a little bit, and it'll give you a a a, a very, very authentic flavor. And in both this and in the hoisin sauce, it, the flavor is absolutely perfect. Um, I'm going to start in by uh, uh, just running through what goes into the hoisin sauce. Uh, uh, recipe is up on the website right now. And the hoisin sauce is based on, uh, uh, it's a plum sauce. I use dried prunes. Uh, dried prunes, I use uh, uh, sodium-free uh, uh, rice vinegar. Um, uh, uh, we use the... Uh, uh, we use some of the Jin Yang seasoning as well, uh, but to compensate, if you if you if you look at the at what goes into a hoisin sauce, a real traditional hoisin sauce, it's got a really really solid umami uh, background to it, and usually that that umami uh, is coming off of uh, what's called black bean sauce. So I thought black bean sauce that sounds uh, pretty benign. I should be able to do that, but as I looked into it, uh, Chinese black bean sauce is uh, is is made from soybeans and they're fermented and uh, and they have a ton of salt in them. Uh, so uh, uh, I couldn't really go with that. So what I did do is I used our depth. And for those of you that aren't familiar with depth, depth is my umami bomb. Depth has is made comprised primarily of uh, of onion, of uh, uh, porcini mushroom, kombu kelp. It's got some tomato. But it's all the, uh, it's, it's got some uh, uh, long pepper, very important. Uh, but it's got these really, really intense uh, umami flavors. And you can use it in this context, trying to make, uh, you know, Asian style sauces where they have these really, really intense umami flavors that they get from uh, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, anyway. So 
it, it, it uses a fair amount of the uh, of the depth. Uh, it works. It counteracts the sweetness of the uh, of the prunes and the, the tanginess of the of the vinegar. And uh, and where is it? Looks like thought I had it right here. Oh, here it is. I mean, it looks, smells, and tastes just like the uh, hoisin sauce that you get in the store. Basically, it's got about nine, ten ingredients. You put them in a blender, you whir them in the blender, you're done. Couldn't be easier. Uh, so that's going to be one of the ingredients that we're putting in the uh, in the kung pao. Now, kung pao, uh, I got to I got to be honest. Two things. First thing, uh, who who would have thought? I love Chinese food. Uh, always, uh, uh, you know, we it was always a favorite uh, for us and our family. But as we started eating healthier, we really have kind of stopped going to Chinese restaurants because uh, uh, so many of them, uh, they just use so much oil and there's so much salt. And it, for them to get their umami flavors, they add even more salt. And it's just something we don't do anymore. Uh, but if you think about what Kung Pao is, Kung Pao really is a saute of crunchy vegetables uh, with uh, uh, um, with cashews. Uh and uh, and that that's about all there is. It's got it, there, there there are two basic elements to it, and we'll start with the sauce. And the sauce for the kung pao, uh, actually, instead of having to instead of having to to cook a sauce on the stove, the sauce is we just actually shake it up. It's it's uh, all the ingredients go in the salad shaker, and uh, the ingredients for the sauce it includes uh, um, we put a little bit of sake, and I know that's uh, that's Japanese. There there are Chinese rice wines. I didn't happen to have some, but I did have an open bottle of sake. Low sodium soy sauce, the uh, the uh, sodium free uh, uh, um, rice vinegar, a little bit of cornstarch for thickening. Uh, for sweetening, we use just a little bit of uh, like I think there's like a tablespoon of uh, uh, maple syrup and the hoisin sauce. And then at the end, we grate, we grate a little bit of uh, 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 lime zest on top, and that's the sauce. So uh, <clears throat> basically, you uh, you start with your uh, your onion sauté, and the onions we do uh, uh, we do uh, mince them fairly fine, uh, sauté the onions down. Uh, then uh, as the onions are getting a little bit further along, I add the uh, uh, I add the uh, the pepper flakes. Pepper flakes. I think in the recipe we say uh, put a, a teaspoon in. That's still fairly. You know, it does have a, a definite heat profile to it. And if you're and if you uh, are not a lover of uh, of chilies and heat, you could cut that in half. Cut it in half easily, or you could uh, uh, instead of using uh, you know uh, uh, they are bowl flakes, which we normally use. You could cut back and use maybe guajillo flakes, which are you know like half the heat. And then uh, uh, we add the uh, the minced uh, garlic and uh, and uh, and fresh ginger. And uh, uh, once that's all going, then uh, then it's time to uh, to just to throw in the uh, the sauce, which is this, it gets dumped in, and then the vegetables. And so, what are the vegetables? Basically, uses a fair amount of uh, of uh, of diced uh, celery, and you can see this is, I call that a little bit smaller than a quarter inch dice to a quarter inch dice. And I go a little bit bigger on the uh, uh, on the bell pepper. In this case, we use a whole green bell pepper and a half of a red bell pepper. The flavor you're going for really is that fresh flavor of the green bell pepper, but the red bell pepper offers that important color. And uh, uh, at that point, your sauce is basically complete. And uh, uh, you just, uh, cook it long. Oh, and and uh, kung pao, as you all know, normally they add a, a protein source. Uh, could be chicken, could be whatever. Uh, we're we're putting so something in that uh, most of you probably have sitting in your refrigerator. In fact, this is the, the Tupperware that was sitting in my refrigerator, and that's just some pre-cooked lentils. These are uh, these are brown lentils. The brown lentils don't get mushy. They hold together better. And uh, I just cook these with uh, a little bit of uh, bada bing bouillon. And uh, I put that in. And then I just simmer it long enough to reduce the sauce down to where it's not, not too watery. Uh, <clears throat> at the end, what's it look like? Well, I've got it over here prepared, and I'll show you the dish. And we're going to plate it. If, uh, if you want to uh, 
If you want the the point by point instruction of seeing it come together, feel free to check out our uh, our little reel. But here it is in the pot. You can see those lovely colors, the reds and the greens, and the uh, uh, and the cashews. I did in advance cook some uh, some rice over here. This is white rice. You know we. We've been eating a ton of this, uh, this Kung Pao. It's become one of my favorite dishes, uh, one of my favorite things uh, to ask Evelyn to make for me. Um, usually we make it with, uh, with brown rice. Couldn't find brown rice this morning, which is one of the realities of cooking. You go with what you have. So we're just going to put some Kung Pao on top of the rice. And I did skip a step. Uh, what I should have done is added. Uh, I like to add a little bit more, a uh, uh, little bit more acid into this. Uh, so I use some fresh lemon. I'll usually take two slices of, uh, of lemon and squeeze them in, and then stir it up. That gives you instead right now. Just gonna cut a slice, squeeze it on the top, so that I do get that fresh lemon tartness uh, on this dish. And that's it. That's a food cow. Bring this up to the uh, end. A little bit closer. Work. I'll hold it for a minute. Isn't that beautiful? That looks, oh my gosh, and it's around lunchtime. That looks amazing. Oh. Why don't you bring I, uh, up to the potluck? Maybe I'll yeah? bring this uh, to your, uh, your potluck on Sunday, AJ. I was going to just say, why don't you bring it to, and guys, if you are in Northern California, anywhere near Sacramento, we have people coming um, to so Fresno. Nick is going to get the, the chef always has to take a bite at the end, which signifies, oh, this is good. <laughs> it is good. Mm, and that's going to be my lunch today. So uh, check, check us out. Take a look at the reel. If you have any comments on the reels, let us know. It's kind of a new thing for us, but like I said, we're just trying to clear out some of the clutter and uh, uh, make it simpler. That looks amazing. I'm having a hard time hearing right now. AJ, are you not coming through? Uh, you can't hear me? Mm, that's not Let's good. See what's going on with this. Can you, can you hear me, Nick? You Guys. were in my earbuds earlier. Yeah, if I don't know why. The audience, you can hear me, right? I hope so. Because Nick will be Sunday at the potluck that we have every month. If you want to join, it's Healthy Living with Lincoln and Chef AJ. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say goodbye, AJ. I really can't hear you. Sorry. Um, okay. Well, thank you, thank you, Nick. And now we're gonna ask Thomas to come and do his presentation with the flavor of the month. If you guys want to win or a free bottle of California balsamic or two actually in the flavor of your choice. Every month, Thomas comes on the third Tuesday and he has a flavor that he'll tell you for next month. And if you make a recipe and it's chosen to be made on Chef AJ Live, you get two free bottles shipped to you. I believe it's US only. Thomas, please come up if you're ready. Are, can you hear me, Chef? I can hear you. Can you hear me, Thomas? Are we there? There can you, you go. You're loud and clear. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. I didn't Good, good, good. Wonderful. Well, it's wonderful to uh, see you, even though I can't see you, but I trust you're there. So life is good. Uh, Ethel and I are, are here uh, for a one week um, uh, hiatus from the little uh, Brindley six-year-old who's off seeing uh, her family for the entire week. So all of a sudden we're empty nesters for an entire week. And I have to say, it's a lot less chaotic around here for one week. So life is good. <laughs> what are you going to make today, Thomas? And what is your flavor of today's month? So let's see. So apricot is the flavor of the day. We've got three one. Wonderful recipes from Eileen, Susan, and a young lady that we all know. Thank you very much. And um, and so the first recipe we're going to do today is uh, something called uh, rice with apricot, parsley, and almonds by our friend Eileen. And want to thank you, Eileen, for doing that. Please uh, send us an email with what two flavors you'd like for your uh, bonus bottles, and we'll send them off to you straight away. Uh, 
here's the, the recipe. This recipe is a good example of how using a California balsamic product can carry the entire recipe. The apricot balsamic is very flavorful, slightly sweet, but also tangy with complex layered tasting notes. It is simple to make and each bite is packed with flavor. It can be served either as a side dish or a main dish. Okay, so here we go. The ingredients are a cup of basmati rice, a cup of skin on almonds, one third cup of chopped dried apricots, one and a half cups of finely chopped parsley, two tablespoons of California balsamic vinegar, more to taste if you like. Now the directions are preheat the oven to 325 degrees, roast the almonds uh, on a rimmed baking sheet until they're golden brown, usually somewhere in the 12 minute range. Let them cool, then chop them up, set them aside. Rinse the rice several times enough until the water runs clear. So get all that starch off. Uh, bring about four cups of water to a boil. Add the rice and then turn down the heat uh, and simmer for about 12 minutes. The texture should be cooked firm, should be cooked, but still firm. Remove from the heat and drain off all the water. Scatter the apricots on top of the rice and cover it and let it sit for five minutes, just warming up the rice and getting them a little bit, sorry, warming up the almonds, uh, the apricots and getting them softened up. Then fluff the rice with a fork, shake the apricot balsamic, add it to the rice and stir it to combine, mix in the parsley and almonds and serve it and enjoy it. And here are some notes. Feel free to substitute your preferred type of rice and to use your favorite method of cooking the rice. We've always used the white sticky rice in, uh, in Hawaii and Japan where I lived. And so using a long grain rice is a little bit different. Almonds that have already been sliced or roasted can be substituted for the whole almonds. My preference is to use the unsulfured dried apricots, which means they have been dried directly in the sun without added sulfur dioxide. They have a dark brown appearance and a much richer and sweeter taste than more common orange apricots. The texture should be moist and chewy. If you can't find them, any type of dried apricots or golden raisins can be substituted, which I didn't think about doing the raisins. And here it is, and this is one. There's the dish now. And you can, of course, add the extra apricot balsamic on it to give it an extra boost of flavor. So easy squeezy. Oh, one thing that we did, uh, the recipe called for some sesame. We were gonna, uh, uh, we were going to uh, roast them a little bit to make them bring out the flavor and all, but we didn't have any. So we instead we used Nick's local spicery. Uh, bada bing, bada boom, bada bang. And uh, oh no, sorry, this is the showstopper. Sorry, this is the showstopper, and we just sprinkled that right over the top, and we thought that was a wonderful substitute. It just gives it a nice crunch to it, along with the almonds and the spices in the showstopper. So thank you, Nick, for making such a wonderful product with that that we can add and substitute. All right, so there's recipe number one. Uh, number two is from our good friend Susan, and it's an apricot balsamic glazed tempeh. And it's one block, an eight ounce of tempeh, sliced into thin strips. A quarter cup of apricot balsamic, two tablespoons of tamari or soy sauce, tamari is the winner, or if you can find a sodium-free soy sauce, good luck, uh, two tablespoons of maple syrup, or to use a date syrup, uh, one teaspoon of minced garlic, a half a teaspoon of ground ginger, pepper to taste, and optional sesame seeds and sliced onions, green onions for a garnish. Now, instructions are, in a shallow disc, whisk together the apricot balsamic, the tamari, maple syrup, minced garlic, ground ginger, salt, and, and that's creating a, a wonderful marinade. And, and um, salt is always uh, no salt. Place the tempeh strips in the marinade, ensuring they are evenly coated. Let them marinate for at least 30 minutes or longer if time allows and flipping them halfway through. Ours that we did, we started marinating them last night and they turned wonderfully dark brown, having, uh, you know, 12 hours of marinating time. Um, preheat a nonstick skillet 
or a grill pan over medium heat. Once the skillet is hot, add the marinated tempeh strips and reserving the marinade. Cook the tempeh for about three to four minutes on each side while it's sizzling or until it's golden brown and slightly caramelized. You've got to really watch them when you turn them over because with a hot pan, they can get dark very quickly on the uh, on the opposite side. So you might turn down the heat when you after you turn them over. Marinade into a, a small saucepan. Bring it to a simmer over medium heat and cook it for three to five minutes minutes until it thickens and turns into a glaze. Once the tempeh is cooked and the glaze is ready, remove the drizzle the apricot balsamic glaze over the tempeh strips, garnish the with the sesame seeds and sliced green, green onions if you like, and serve the apricot balsamic glaze tempeh as a flavorful dish, or you can add it to salads or to a grain bowl. And so we put ours on a bed of greens and you can see here, you can see the glaze right on top of that. And uh, and of course, you can make this a full salad or just the greens or just the greens. I mean, there's so many options for this and even serving it, like she said, as a main dish. So that's. And the tempeh, um, tempeh is just a fermented, fermented soy beans. Chef, how do you use tempeh if you use it? Well, I, I I actually have a recipe in my book on process for a kung pao tempeh. So I use it like as a savory kind of maybe meat meat. Nice. Sauce. And yeah, it's a little heartier than tofu, I think. We found it, we had it this, this morning and we found it really filling. Uh, I was surprised at how dense uh, the tempeh was, but the, the glaze on there it makes a wonderful sauce. So we really enjoyed that one a lot. So all good. All righty here. Um, let's see, continuing our cute story that we've done over the last three years. Um, and, and a lot of times we have um, big deals that we think are going to just rock and roll. And big deals can often go wrong, as as we've seen over the years. I mentioned a, a year ago that we had had a, a deal with uh, weight loss clinics in Pens uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, through one of my employees. Her father had weight loss clinics, and we were going to send 20,000 bottles a year of our uh, oil-free clinics, and it was just going to just be the greatest thing in the world, and boom, it falls through. And about um, in 2000. Uh, just before 2008, we had a deal with a fella in Las Vegas who had a China connection, and we were going to send, uh, we actually did send little five-ounce bottles of our balsamic to China for their approval. It got approved, and they said, we're going to cut a deal, and we're going to send 10,000 bottles a month for an entire year. And after that time, we'd see if they would expand it even more. And then 2008 and the financial crisis happened, and it was the end of that. So, so many, you know, deals that you think are right on the edge and are going to be fantastic, you know, eventually just crap out. And it's just such a, well, we're going to go back to the drawing board and, and continue continue doing our festivals and markets, and eventually something good is going to happen. And Chef, it did. Thank you very much for coming into our lives. Uh -huh. Thank you. Well, as I'm feeling it. So uh, yeah. our third recipe. Well, thank you. So, um, and yeah, the plant-based community has changed us forever. And, um, and I just spoke with a young lady this morning who said, Thomas, your products have changed my life forever. I enjoy eating my salads and vegetables on a daily basis now because they're using whatever the flavor is that they like. So what a treat to have uh, a relationship uh, with uh, our, our customers and ourselves. So let's see. Finally, the last one, Chef, is your recipe. Thank you very much. Be sure to send us an email with what flavors you would oh, like for your you top don't, and oh, thank bottles. You. I'm so honored. To be, I'm the, so honored to be featured on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the first time we've actually done one of your absolute recipes. So this is wonderful. We liked it so much that we had to do it. So it's the apricot quinoa pudding. 
from the world famous Chef AJ. Uh, one cup of white quinoa, one and a half cups of unsweetened plant milk, uh, one cup of fresh apricots, or if not in season, a can of peaches in their own juice, and they're diced up, one half cup of chopped dried apricots, unsweetened and unsulfured, four tablespoons of our uh, apricot balsamic, a teaspoon of vanilla powder, and you're right, Chef, vanilla bean powder is cinnamon. To start Start off, place all the ingredients in your Instant Pot and cook on high pressure for five minutes. Let pressure release naturally. Uh, uh, enjoy hot in place of your usual breakfast oatmeal or chili and make a par make a low fat pear whip. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, this is for a low fat version of the luscious pear whip for those who can't eat nuts. Two and a half cups of canned pears in their own juice, a cup of gluten-free rolled oats, and a teaspoon of vanilla powder. Blend all those in a high-speed blender until smooth. And we did it twice because we made it, it was a little gritty the first time we stopped it. We blended it even another uh, one minute and it was smooth as silk. So I love that. And a chef's tip here, substitute unsweetened jarred peaches in their own juice for the pears. If you're using fresh pears, this may not be as sweet. Um, consider roasting them first or adding date paste to taste. So that's that. And then she also made a strawberry coulis. This sauce is boss, as she says. It's not only pairs well with all chocolate desserts in my book, but also is delicious on nice cream or even fresh fruit. And that goes like this. A bag of frozen raspberries or strawberries or cherries and defrosted, or you can use fresh. So we use today fresh uh, strawberries and frozen raspberries uh, oh. because we had them. Uh, date paste or date syrup to taste. And we start with a half a quarter cup. Uh, puree the defrosted fruit and date paste blender until it's smooth. Add more date paste until desired sweetness is reached. Pour into a squeeze bottle and serve over desserts such as orange chocolate mousse or even this. And here's our little uh, container. Thank you for the tip on where to buy that. And thank you for the tip on where to get this bad boy because yeah, that's I exactly know. where I, Ethel got that. Thomas, I, and then, uh, I put that sauce on everything. Rice pudding, you know, everything. It's delicious. That's great. And I love that commercial that says, I put this beep on everything. <laughs> That's it. Uh, and Chef, you also had in your notes of the vanilla caramel sauce. We didn't make that, but that's in our, it's on your video and on our show, uh, order, show notes as well. And then we just stacked them up to make a parfait. And so we did this one with the sauce, uh, the the uh, the pear sauce on the bottom, then the strawberry coulis, and then the oats and whatnot, and then did multiple ones and made that. And then Ethel said, well, let's make a little individual one if you were going to make a lot of them for several people that you could do something like that in a nice cute little bowl that worked out. We had one of these uh, just after we made it. And Chef? It's killer good. It's really I, good. I know. I wish absolutely you loved it. Funny, Thomas, because I was just talking so, to somebody yesterday. I don't get a lot of views on my recipe videos, but man, that is a good recipe. And if you didn't want to do the sauces, just having it hot from the instant pot, it's better than breakfast oatmeal, in my opinion. Oatmeal's boring. And that's what we did. We had that right out of the pot as well last night. And then we put, all I did was I put the right out of the pot, made a bowl and then the strawberry coulis over the top and that was it and that was our little dessert that we had last night uh and i thought oh this is wonderful i can't wait for the whole thing to do that and we had it this morning so chef you are amazing thank you for all your wonderful recipes that you've done for us over the years oh God, and look well, forward to more have, in the future when you have a so, delicious product those like are our three you know, I think we're having some sound problems with both you and Nick, and we should probably work that out before the next show. But I just want to say when you're given a delicious pro a pro product like California balsamic and local spicery, it's very easy to come up with delicious recipes. That is correct. So next month, uh, the recipe. Recipe of the uh, for April. Let's say in the beginning of April, we're actually going to be at the Clayton Art. No, the uh, 
uh, Clovis um, is uh, called Big Hat Days, just uh, south of Fresno. And they're in over that uh, last two years that we've been going to that, we've had six to 10 uh, plant-based people. And one uh, husband and wife drove from Los Angeles to Fresno just to see our, our flavors. She said, we want to come and see them. We've taken a, a two-day trip. So they spent the night in the area, came to see us, and then drove home the next day. That is devotion. That's around a five, almost six-hour drive. Uh, but they said they wanted to come up and try all the flavors, and they knew we'd be there. So um, that's wonderful. Good. Anytime you're driving and you're coming to visit, please introduce yourself as a, a wonderful chefite out there because we're still going to give you your cute little bottles for coming up there as well and seeing us at a festival. So that's good. And the flavor for next month, drum roll please, is one of our all-time most popular flavors is the teriyaki balsamic. Oh, so that's easy. Using our that's, teriyaki balsamic. Mm. That's how I met you was the teriyaki was the first flavor I used. That's exactly it. Right. Do you remember the recipe that you made with it? It would have to be like some kind of pineapple fried rice, I think. Yep. That is exactly right. Good for you. Uh, yep, teriyaki, was... uh, no fried rice. Uh, yep. We... And it's still on your website, uh, you know, four years later. Yep. That's how we met. You guys have any qu last minute questions for Nick and or Thomas or about the products? Everything is in the show notes. And by show notes, I mean the video on YouTube, right below, you click more and you'll see everything. Um, so Suzanne is uh, saying teriyaki is used daily here. You know, and they're so it's so good. It's so teriyaki and Gilroy garlic are so close, but they're also so different. You know, and the ginger in the teriyaki makes all the difference to give it. You know, because it's just fresh garlic and our organic ginger yep. uh, is the only ingredients in the teriyaki. SW says I so use my SW says I use my California balsamic as a dipping sauce for fresh spring rolls. Absolutely. And you wouldn't believe this. Uh, Nick might have witnessed this because Nick lives close and he sometimes comes to our meetups, but they make SOS free food for us at several vegan and even non-vegan restaurants. And you wouldn't believe how many people pull out a three ounce bottle of California balsamic at the restaurant. It's hilarious. It happens every time. It is so funny that the people do that. Yeah. It's too bad. That All is good. I wish that they had that as a condiment, you know, at every restaurant, just some California balsamic and some local spicery, you know? Well, yeah. Chef, I will say something that's a little feather. Um, Chef Ramsey's at True North is now using our California tart balsamic for their dressing at True North. And I just sent them the ginger tart balsamic and the curry uh, tart organic balsamic uh, for them to have. So, and that's the only place you can get it right now is at True North. So uh, I've been trying to get Dr. Goldhammer to have our products for four years and, and we're finally in. Oh, wow. Well, I love to know what I think of those flavors and maybe even taste it. The plain was a little bit too tart for me. All right. It well, is thank very you. tart. I agree with you. Thank you, Nick and Thomas. Great to see you as always. Uh, Nick, I'll see you Sunday. Anyone who's in Northern California around the Sacramento area, please go to Healthy Living in Lincoln with Chef AJ and come to our free potluck. We have two bands performing as well as a live TED Talk, 18 minutes from 100-year-old Dr. John Scharfenberg on longevity. Thanks, everyone, for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for two live shows. Yes, this is a live show. I've done it every day for almost four years. March 20th will be the fourth year that I've done a live show every day for almost 2,000 episodes. And tomorrow we have two shows. At nine o'clock, we have Dr. Stefan Esser. He is a plant-based, Harvard-educated orthopedic doctor, and he answers viewers' questions, especially the ones that have been submitted in advance. He'll be talking about exercise, among other things. And then we have another plant-based superstar at 11 a.m., Carly Budrug from Plant U, who's a New York Times bestselling, number one New York Times bestselling author of Plant U. She's got a new cookbook coming out about scrappy cooking. 